Hello, Internet. Okay, so today I am bringing you my latest misadventure. Uh, uh, anyone who knows me knows that I cannot focus on more than one thing at a time. I can't do it. I am not a multitasker. Now, um, I was working on Mark II, which is still coming. It's sitting right over there, about five feet. Um, need to get it put together and get the electronics wired in and it'll be ready to go. The, but something caught my attention and I thought, wow, that's going to be easy. I've got all the parts. I just need to 3D print a few things and slap it all together and it'll be working. Well, um, it's supposed to be a diode laser. And this is Bootstrap at Workshop, so you know how that went. Okay, so our first problem that I encountered was uh, these rails are off of Mark I. These wheels are off of Mark I. And they're just, even if I can get them parallel, perfectly parallel, I'm still having problems with the tensioning. This is wobbly. Um, it's not exactly smooth. So to fix that, I ordered these bearings. And we are going to be mounting this like so. The laser is going to mount on here. And that is going to mount right on top like that. The next problem I ran into, this is our Z-axis. There's no real height adjustment in this. So, I bought one. Thumb screw goes up and down. That is going to mount right here, and our laser module is going to mount on the front. Now, since this is going to significantly kick the laser forward, uh, I'm going to lose a few inches here. I have redesigned these gantry arms so that, oh wait, uh, yeah, it's this way. <laughs> I have redesigned them so that they are at a very extreme angle to get me all of that space back so that when this is all the way backwards, the laser We'll have this as usable. Uh, the bed here will be, all of the bed will be able to be utilized. Put it that way. Here is a little, uh, shall we say, a, a quick crash course in part design in the 3D printer era. Okay, we have our first version of our part right here. Um, it's designed to bolt onto the front face of a 2040 rail section. The spacing is, is uh, for the holes in there, which have been tapped for, in this case, quarter 20, but it could be M6. Either one will work. Um, anyway, the way this is supposed to work is you stick a GT2 belt through it, and you clamp it down right here, and then there's, there's holes right here, and you're supposed to run a zip tie or a piece of wire through here and clamp it down. That is how it was envisioned. Well, the first problem is the slots in here are two millimeters when they need to be one millimeter because that's the actual spacing on a GT2 belt. So that one fails. Now we have the exact same part, but the Spacing has been corrected. So that actually locks in. 
So that works. It is, however, I did, however, notice that it was entirely too big. And uh, also this slot in here for the belt, maybe that's too narrow. I, I hadn't decided yet on exactly whether this thing was going to be able to move back and forth or not. So I just made the slot, so I decided to make the slot wider. That was this version. And then I, and then I realized, you know what? While I was at it, I didn't need this material up here, so I chopped that off in the slicer. Now at this point, I'm trying to get the uh, support material out in the print, and that's a pain in the butt to the point where I actually broke this one trying. Um, and I also noticed that I don't need this much material up here. Enter the next version of the part. Okay, so we have cut the height on this surface. Everything else is the same, including the annoying support settings in the slicer, which I had not redone yet. I then redid them and resliced it in the correct, I don't even know if you can see that, I hope you can. Uh, there's a hole here. And we'll, and I printed up four of these, one for each corner, the, uh, and so I could stretch the belt. And what I discovered very quickly is that locking this down on one is easy. Stretching the belt tight enough on two of them is impossible. So I needed to rethink my tensioning system. So I still have two of these on the machine. However, <laughs> The new tensioning system is a fine-tuning system. Here's the finished assembly, what it looks like. Okay, there is a steel pin in here that the belt wraps around, and then it twist ties together with the teeth locking it in place, and the tensioner is a simple wing nut. And as you can see from our final assembly here. All right, so <laughs> let's see if it works. Okay, so what do you need? So that's a miracle. Jump cuts, lots of jump cuts.
So, all of the mechanical bits and bobs, the belts, they're all in. The cable chains are mounted. Uh, all of our parts are basically on. Uh, I have to come up with a special bracket for this that I forgot about, but whatever. Anyway, yeah, that'll take like five minutes. So, basically, mechanically, we're done. Now comes the fun part, and by fun I mean ridiculously tedious. I have to wire up all of the motors, the limit switches, the control board, the power supply, the laser. Uh, oh, there's a targeting laser that I just found out about and ordered that I'm going to be adding. Uh, and eventually an air assist to go to the shop air compressor. So, uh, yeah, that's next time. Thanks for watching. Ciao. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.